So today is uh, Saturday, and there is very little guitar work or anything involved going on. We're just hanging out. We actually went to a distillery and picked up some booze, which I'm sure you'll see in the next live. Or maybe not. It's mostly yours. Mine. <laughs> yeah. I actually didn't get any bourbon or anything. And then now, vegan mac and cheese and what is it? Some kind of cashew cheese garlic bread. Right on. So garlic, cheesy garlic bread and mac and cheese, but vegan, obviously. We'll break it out. See what's up. Smoked mac and cheese. That looks amazing. Okay, we're going to eat. So if you're ever in Savannah, Georgia, and you eat a plant-based diet, that place right there, Fox and Fig, is amazing. Everything they make in there is amazing, and you should definitely check it out. All right, so I don't know if I mentioned this last week, but uh, my power supply for my winder went bad. So I ordered a new one. The problem is um, it's not the right size and I can't wait anymore. So what we're gonna have to do is we're just gonna replace the jack also in addition to the power supply itself. So this is the inside of my winder motor, Arduino, switches, counter, the whole deal. It's pretty basic actually, but this jack is going to have to come out and this one's going to have to go in. All right, so new jack for the power supply is installed. And I got one with a long enough cord where it'll actually not hang and that's probably what the problem was in the first place. So now we have speed and we're back to 12 volts I was running at 9 volts for a while so this will speed up the process let me wind a little bit faster uh, for people who have been asking about my winding machine this is a it's based on a Shatton design but it is different than a Shatton uh, we have direction here on off switch here reset counter I already showed you the guts um, basically 3M mount tape here and uh, the speed wheel here and then these little dudes adjust for how wide your bobbin is you know so you adjust that for your traverse I think I probably did a p90 last on that so that's why it's so narrow and just put an allen key in here and adjust that and everything else is by hand wire wire and it's time to go Oh, I'll show you one more thing that came in over the weekend too. So on the white strat, we're going to be doing some um, fret work. And I ordered this short sanding block. Um, you can see it's labeled on the inside here. So one th six, I think 400, 600, 1200, and 1000 grit sandpaper. It's just a short one for spot checking. We're not doing a full fretboard. Um, level anyway so that's what this is for I have a long one at in storage but I figured it for traveling and for just doing spot checking this would be a great little setup and then I got a new fret rocker because I didn't like the steel stamped fret rocker that I had before because the edges were a little rough and that just didn't seem right so there you go so that uh, strat fret work video is gonna start happening today or tomorrow we're gonna start working on that but I gotta make some pickups first so an interesting question came up uh, in comments of one of the videos I just ran across the other day um, and it is talking about magnetizing pickups now we did a video on how I magnetize pickups but I was gonna just show you the setup again directly having to do with this question and it was if you have a pickup, um, you know, you store them in a drawer or maybe over time they lose magnetism because Elnico uh, pickups lose magnetism or if you store them face to face, if the polarity ends up being wrong or if you want to change the polarity on a pickup. So let's say you have, um, you know, they're wired the same, different brands or something and they're wired the same and you want to flip the polarity of the magnets so it's like south up instead of north up or whatever 
um, it, it all can be done. It's, it's super easy and it's actually sh super cheap to do it. I could probably leave links to magnets and it'll only be a few bucks. Um, I'll try to find some. I'll put them in the links to the, in this video. But basically what you're doing is you have a magnet here and a magnet here and one is south and one is north. So if we put the, see how the pol polarizing magnet, uh, this one is north, this one is south. And so if you pass this pickup between here facing this direction, then, uh, well, actually I did it the other way because it's a neck pickup. So um, if you face the pickup this way and you pass it between those two magnets, I've already done it, so I don't want to do it again. Um, then that will make this end of the pickup north and this end of the pickup south. If I was to switch it around and do it again, which again, I don't want to do that, but if I were to go do that again, then I could actually change the polarity so that this would be uh, north up instead of south up. So you can switch it, you can flip it around depending on which, back, which way you have the pickup facing. <clears throat> All that to say, if you have a bag full of pickups, um, or a, a drawer or box or whatever full of pickups um, Al Nico that you can flip the polarity um, If it's a ceramic pickup, I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so here's a ceramic pickup This one is marked white on one side and it is not marked on the other side. The white is north And the not white is south now you can't really change the polarity of a ceramic pickup in theory. Let's try it. Technically you're not supposed to be able to. Let's be a little closer. because the magnetism is inherent to the material itself. So I don't think we can change the polarity of the pickup. All right, so there's north. All right, let's flip it around and go the other way. This is very difficult to do because the magnets are pulling on each other. again. Holy smokes. Paint me green and call me Gumby. We just flipped the polarity on a ceramic magnet. When you read in books and listen to forums and all that kind of stuff, they tell you you can't. But I just did it. I would not recommend doing it because it is actually way weaker than it was a few minutes ago. It's definitely weaker than it was. Um, so I wouldn't do that. So what I would do though, is I would, if you want to flip a polarity of one of these, I would actually just take it off. If you can get it off without breaking it, um, and flip it over. The only downside to doing it that though is ceramic magnets are ceramic. So you can break them. In fact, if you like smack them together hard enough, they'll break. So when you're prying it off, you know, if it's glued to the bottom of a pickup and you're trying to flip this polarity of this magnet, um, just know that you could snap them in half because they are pretty fragile. Anyway, I learned some today. You can use these really strong magnets to change the polarity of a ceramic magnet. I didn't know you could do that. Everything you read everywhere and every what everybody tells you is that you can't or it doesn't work. That being said, again, not optimal. Flip it over. Okay, so I'm shooting the video um, on doing fret work on the Stratocaster that I just got. Uh, you'll see that video coming out probably a week from Tuesday because we've got another video coming out Tuesday. 
Anyway, that video's coming. But while I was here, uh, a question that I've seen a lot on the internet is, what is this S1 switch? How does it work? Um, if you bought one, how would you make use of it? So I went ahead and took all the screws out of the pickguard. So let's get underneath the hood of this guitar and break down an S1 switch. How about that? Okay, so when you look at an S1 switch, what you've got is you see there's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Basically all this is, is it's one switch that activates four switches. So, and when you push that button down, it does the same thing for all the switches. So, uh, and the way to explain it is the middle of each one of these. So the middle, 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 middle. Those are your commons. I would call those kind of like your input, whatever you want coming in there. So with the legs going to the right, okay, we want to have the switch in the up position. So that would be this one right here and this one right here. If you were to flip the pot, this one right here and this one right here. So you see it's always up. So if you turn it, then it would still be up, right? So that's the up position. What about the down position? Then the down position would be this one, this one, this one, and this one. So when the switch is up, it's these two. When the, when the switch is down, it's these two, the bottom ones. That's basically how it works. Um, like I said, you can't switch them individually from each other, so that limits a little bit what you do, but um, having four things going on in there is pretty cool. So I just want to give you a quick look. I'm pretty stoked about this. At the latest Dylan Custom Guitars build. Uh, this one is going far, far away. Many, many, many time zones on the other side of the world. Uh, but I figure I'd give you a quick tour of it. So... You are looking at uh, a 12 inch radius fretboard, I think. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure. Tusk nut. We got clues and tuners on there, uh, locking tuners. Now you notice they are like the H pattern vintage uh, fender style, but they do have normal locking wheels on them. They're like that's one of my one of my favorite. Staggered because you know. You don't want string trees. String trees are dumb. <clears throat> so, uh, we got that. Logo, of course. And uh, P90s. Pretty sweet. Volume tone. The only detail I need to work out still, I got two details that need to be worked out before this thing goes home. One is knobs and switch color is not right, so we need to fix that. Um, and then, basically, oh, and screws to hold the pickups in. Uh, they're just sitting in there now. They're like, they're not going to fall out, but they can't, it obviously can't go home with no screws in it. So that's got to happen. Um, if you look at this, you'll see it is a hardtail. <clears throat> so it's pretty awesome. There'll be a video coming out on this thing pretty soon. Some kind of demo, I'm pretty sure. So, I mean, obviously we've got a demo of the pickups and demo of the guitar and etc. Uh, one thing I will tell you, after playing a brand new Strat and having to do a bunch of work to it and then playing this thing, and the Strat still isn't near as good as this. Um, I mean, if that Strat's a thousand bucks and this is $1,900, uh, let's just say I don't feel bad about what I charge because this guitar is real good. Anyway, uh... Make sure you hit the like button and the and share this and etc. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Make sure you check out our live on Thursdays and we got a cool video coming out on Tuesday. And uh, yeah, I think you're gonna dig the content we got coming up. Make sure you check out Patreon, the little join button down there because everybody's been seeing not the vlogs but everything else has been on YouTube for a week already. Uh, so you can see it early if you click those little buttons down there. Thanks for hanging out. And we'll see you soon.